Well, good day, everyone. My name is Mickey Eisenberg, and I'd like to welcome you to the, the first of the, Re the Resuscitation Academy uh, videos. And they're all um, geared to help you provide better cardiac arrest care in your community. I'm very pleased that this, uh, this day we have Jennifer Blackwood telling us about a very important article recently published in the journal Resuscitation. I've worked with Jennifer for boy, a long number of years. Jennifer, our offices are, are just literally six feet apart. And so it's a thrill to have her talk about this study. So Jennifer, could you uh, describe the name, the title of it, and then tell us what you discovered? Uh, sure, yes. And, and, the, and these days our, our offices are a, a few feet more than six feet away, but it's nice to have this virtual it's option. <laughs> Um, so we endeavored, embarked upon um, trying to get a smartphone application to alert people of potential cardiac arrests in their community in the United States, similar to where a lot of places have been doing it, such as Denmark, um, the Netherlands, and a number of other places. So we started a grant-funded project called the Verified Responder Program. And in 2017, um, using the Pulse Point platform. And it's a smartphone app that if there is a cardiac arrest nearby, um, you'll receive a little tone on your phone and it will give you a map and directions. And if you need CPR instructions, it'll give you that as well. But um, it had been limited to public locations only. And we know that, you know, over 80% of cardiac arrests happen in private locations. So in the United States, we haven't been able to get our foot in the door until we started this pilot project. Um, so it's called the Verified Responder Program. And in 2000, beginning in late 2017, we had our first, um, we had our first activations with off-duty um, EMS providers. So these are paramedics or EMTs or other EMS professionals that signed up in five different communities um, to potentially respond to a cardiac arrest in a private residence. Um, and we also were able to equip them with AEDs through a grant from Philips. Um, so this, um, this study is kind of the results of the first year of this project and kind of seeing how many activations there were, did we respond, and um, how, how did it go for the first year of trying to get into private residences. And the results were that it was, a, it was a modest response. We've learned a lot of lessons, but the main takeaways for us is that there were no adverse events and overwhelmingly the providers Wanted, wanted to continue and had a very positive response for it. So um, it was more of a proof of concept paper and that this can work in the United States. Yes, I, I think this article really was groundbreaking in several ways. Well, first of all, it, uh, it really was a very creative idea to get that time interval from collapse to the first defibrillatory shock shorter than it currently is. As we know now, that interval is somewhere on the order of 10 to 20 minutes of time from collapse. And we know that every minute you can shorten that time interval is going to dramatically increase the likelihood of survival. So that, that is really um, precedent setting in, in terms of what it's trying to do. It's in effect having a, a, a nearby neighbor who's been verified as a verified responder, uh, be alerted, grab his or her defibrillator, knock on the door, and uh, shorten that key interval from time to defibrillation. Um, did you find any episodes in which um, the verified responders um, felt it didn't go well, or people weren't, uh, you know, who are you knocking on our door? You're not in a uniform. What was your experience? That, um, we really, we had no experiences like that. <clears throat> and it seems like we continue to um, 
we continue in that direction, even though we haven't published on the 2019 and 2020 data. Um, the main thing was that people were happy to have assistance. Um, and, you know, these guys show up, we had one show up, he had been welding, so he was, he was in his welder's uniform. <laughs> and, um, and he just, you know, announce who you are and people overwhelmingly are pretty happy to have the assistance. Where do you see this evolving? How, how do you fast forward five years and, and what would you like to see this kind of program become verified responders? Yeah, that's a great question um, and one that we've been thinking about a lot. And the main limitation that we found in this current study is that we just weren't being activated. Our providers, we had 550 providers um, covering an area of, you know, over 2 million people in these five different sites. And a number of them, we found out they live in um, different jurisdictions or we found there were some technology issues. So basically expanding the number, the density of verified responders in one community so that more people are activated or more cardiac arrests have an activation with them. Um, and Pulse Point actually is doing this now and a number of people that may be listening to this might already be participating but they have, it's called Verified Responder Community, and it is the ability to have not just off-duty providers, but kind of trained laypersons that the agency vets um, be able to go into private residences as well, which I think could significantly increase the number of verified responders getting activations, such as law enforcement or nurses or doctors, other people like that would be able to become verified responders. Um, and we've also looked into, um, you know, expanding the radius of activations and expanding to other communities and stuff like that. Um, and the next, hopefully the next publication you'll see is that we've also found that um, over half of the activations at this point in time are for non-cardiac arrest, but still might be time sensitive um, issues that a verified responder might be able to help out with. So we're looking into that too and trying to study how best to fine tune the technology, but also maybe add a few more tools to the toolkit for verified responders. Oh, lovely idea, kind of. A uh, peripheral benefits from, yeah. from the program. Wonderful. Well, Jennifer, I, I am just really thrilled to see this. It's called Improving Response to Out-of-Hospital Cardiac Arrest, the Verified Responder Program Pilot. It's published in the June issue of the journal Resuscitation. Jennifer Blackwood is the lead author and has joined us on this first uh, web broadcast from the Resuscitation Academy. Uh, I'd like to leave just one final thought. Uh, this was a pilot project. It, it was really a, a test of concept. And as you um, know, the, one of the mantras of the Resuscitation Academy is measure and improve. And that's exactly what this pilot program has done. It, uh, it was a new concept. We measured the performance, looked at it in great detail. And I think the next iteration will be even better than, than the initial one. Um, be well, everybody. Be safe and do good out there. Bye from the Resuscitation Academy. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.